There's a kind of fragrance that isn't really me that I'm happy to lean into. This is a fragrance that isn't me and it isn't, isn't me and... Hey guys, welcome back! Today I thought we would just do a quick casual catch up and chat. I haven't really had the time to sit down and film and edit the way that I normally like to, as you guys know for better or worse. I really like to edit. I think it's really fun. <laughs> I know some of you really hate it. Um, I'm a little low on time these days, but I still wanted to, of course, chat about fragrant things. So we're just going to chat. The first reason, the main reason why I decided to film this video today is because I wanted to talk about this fragrance that I got and I was like this close to decluttering and that's Cara Mia from Etienne Agnier. I got it because I heard it was a reasonable facsimile to Bottega Veneta EDP, which is one that you guys know I really, really love. I was curious about a affordable, spray a billion times, spray it on your linens type of scent to use in conjunction with Bottega Veneta. This one is much sharper to my nose than Bottega Veneta. It definitely has a similar vibe, but I think because of the bergamot and the citrus in the top of this, it feels a little bit sharper and piercing and... Just something unfinished about it to me, I guess. And this is a very affordable fragrance as well. I think I got it for like $35 on FragranceNet. So it wasn't a huge loss, but I also was ready to declutter it until today when I layered it with Lancome's Idole L'Entance. And that's what I'm wearing right now. And it's beautiful. I'm sorry, there's beeping. Idole L'Entance is a fragrance that I love anyway, but at times, especially during certain times of the month, it can feel a little bit too sweet to me and today was one of those days and I figured, what the hell, let me layer it on top. And it tempers it beautifully. So now I'm really curious about layering this with other fragrances that are going to be too sweet because it has a really nice, almost like a cedar chest kind of vibe. I guess all in all, it's just brighter than I imagined that it was going to be. But for tempering a sweeter fragrance, I think this is gonna be great. So I'm gonna report back on this one as my experiments continue, but that is Cara Mia from Etienne Agnier. I'm gonna just pause until the beeping stops. Let's do that. Lipstick on the straw, as always. Is it getting louder? Okay, let's hope that it's okay. <laughs> the next fragrance I wanted to chat about is Tiffany & Co. Intense. I picked this one up because a bunch of you guys had recommended it to me for an iris fragrance. And it is really nice makeup-y powdery iris. It gets compared to Dior Homme and I see those similarities. You're kidding. Anyway, it does get, get compared to Dior Homme. I see those similarities. But for me, it's also incredibly similar to Goutal's Etoile du Nuit. It shares a similar degree of powderiness and sweetness. I think this might do better in cooler weather, but for now, I've really enjoyed layering it with other brighter things. And I actually, this is not a good weather combination at all, but I layered it with the oil perfumery dupe of Jo Malone's Myrrh and Tonka, and it was outstanding. I got so many compliments on that combo, and normally I don't get that many compliments. Um, <laughs> it's fine. But that combo, man, elicited hella compliments. Hella compliments. I'm really excited to see how this performs in cooler weather, and once I'm back in the company of Etoile du Nuit, I can compare and decide if I need both. Because at first, I will admit, I was a little disappointed because they smelled so similar in my memory. Again, I'll have to put them side by side. Anyway, that's Tiffany Co. Intense. So thank you guys for recommending this one to me. It's really lovely. All right, next, I picked up Cacharel Eden. I spotted this at Nordstrom Rack. I think this always kind of goes for, you know, a relatively affordable price. 
I needed to know what it was about, right? This is a classic polarizing fragrance and I really, I really like it. It's strong. I mean, it is potent. It's the peeping. Take 70,000. This is swampy. This is damp. It's rainforesty. It's rotting fruit. It is green decay. It's what I imagine Aura would smell like, Aura from Mugler, and it has an incredibly 90s air. I don't even know what I entirely mean when I say that, except that it smells of the era. And people do speak about the similarity between this and the plasticky, like, techno note that's in Gucci Rush. I can see that as well. There is a plastic melonness and I think it must be the blend of like the peach and the melon and all those fruity swampy lotusy aquatic elements that are in there as well that make it fascinating I wore it once one spray I went on a long walk here in San Diego where it's quite warm and I had one spray on my wrist and it created the whole bubble and it was really beautiful. But I think that that is like the upper limit of how much of this to spray. I feel like this is going to last me the rest of my life. And I think the box is quite beautiful and it really epitomizes this fragrance, how lush it is and how, I guess, detailed. The notes are a bit of a mishmash, but there's specificity in that mishmash you're able to smell everything and nothing all at once. I can't quite explain it, but I can smell all of the notes holistically as well as individually, I guess. This is fascinating. It gives me a scent memory of a really hot August day and I'm seven or eight years old and I've taken a shower after a day in the sun and the pool and my mom has put talcum powder and Florida water and I'm put down for a nap before dinner. It feels like a shower after a super hot day in that golden hour between the afternoon and having dinner. I'm really curious to try this on a super ass hot humid day and see what happens. Will I choke myself out? Nobody knows. I'm so glad I have this. It is super, super unique. Can't wait to play with it more and have some more fully formed thoughts on it. But so far, like, yowza and wow, so that's Casherelle Eden. All right, next we have my little personal travel decant of Bulgari's Ote Blue. I am trying to go through some of the decants that I brought with me. This is one that I have a full bottle of and I just put them into these little sprayers when I travel so I don't have to bring, you know, full bottles of everything that I want to bring a bottle of. This one is so beautiful. I picked this one up maybe half a year ago. I don't know why I'm telling you that. It doesn't matter. Um, but it is a gorgeous, powdery, cool, violet and lavender and tea fragrance. But the most prominent note that stands out to me is the shiso at the top, which lends it just an extra element of a subtle aromatic quality. It's very, very comforting. It gives the evocation of cold laundry drying on a line in the shade or on a cloudy day or something, but not in a melancholic way at all, in a rather crisp, cool way. It's so, so pretty. There's a little bit of iris and musk at the base, but again, it's primarily shiso and violet to me. So I have a feeling I'm going to tear through the rest of this decant soon and feel proud of myself for emptying something. It's quite beautiful. I think I've said this before, but this is what I wished Prada's Infusion de Reese would have been. It just gives that extra something to me and eschews that sharp stab you in the third eye feeling that Infusion de Reese gives to me for whatever reason. I know that it's widely loved, but yeah, something about it rubbed my third eye wrong. But this one's lovely. I, I just have such a soft spot for Bulgari fragrances, what can I say? So that's 
Ote Blue. And then while we're on the subject of Bulgari, is it Bulgari or Bulgari? Let me know. This is from their Splendida collection. This is Patchouli Temptation. I smelled this at a duty free and immediately fell in love. It has very strong similarity to Narciso the White Cube. It is a gorgeous patchouli, airy patchouli with a peach note at the top. And then there's orris in the mid that creates a really enveloping powderiness that I think is what gives it that uh, Narciso White Cube vibe. White Cube is a little bit creamier and more sensual musky. This is a little bit brighter, more aromatic, slightly more dusty, but super elevated, very put together, somewhat sensual, but in a intellectual, competent way. This would be a great work office fragrance, I think. If White Cube is a bit cloying to you, but you like the overall vibe that it gives, I would say check this one out. I just love that powderiness that it has. Beautiful, airy take on patchouli. This one was a love at first sniff. That is Patchouli Temptation. I really like these bottles. They're so structural, architectural. And the last fragrance I want to chat about today is Lanterdi Intense from Givenchy. This is one I had had my eye on for a while because I was really curious about that sesame note that gets spoken so oft, so oft spoken of. And I regret to inform that I don't necessarily receive a sesame note. I receive a creaminess and a richness, a sweetness in the longer dry down. Maybe a tinge of nuttiness, but it's mostly sweet and vanillic to me. And it wasn't entirely what I expected. And you know, weirdly, I, this wasn't a blind buy. I had tested it. When I tested it on a strip, I really loved it and received it in my mailbox. It didn't quite smell the same as I remembered. I really love the opening though. The opening gives me a beautiful, sweet orange blossom primarily that reminds me of racers in my childhood. It gives me a very happy scent memory of being in elementary school and having a container full of scented erasers that like I bought at the book fair or something. But unfortunately that part of it is quite short-lived and then it just sort of dries down into mostly a sweet vanillic bubblegum leaning tuberose. Yeah, that the, the opening that I like so much is already dissipating. It's quite fleeting. So for that reason, I'm a little bit, a little bit disappointed in this, especially considering like this was not a blind buy. I, I tested it on this, but I'm gonna keep playing with it. I like it in theory. It smells lovely. It just doesn't feel like me. And I know I, I just said that I'm moving away from categorizing fragrances into ones that feel like me and ones that don't feel like me. But with that said, there's a kind of fragrance that isn't really me that I'm happy to lean into. This is a fragrance that isn't me and it isn't, isn't me. And, but we'll see, we'll see. It is a little bit too syrupy at times. It's much sweeter than I anticipated, I guess. So. Lanterdy Intense. Maybe I'll try some layering combos with this and see if that helps at all. If not, this might be rehomed soon. So that's it for me today, you guys. Just a quick little chat and a check-in. Let me know what you guys have been wearing, what you've had your eye on, what you've purchased recently or decluttered, anything fragrance-related, let me know. Hopefully I'll be able to come back soon with more regular type of content, but if you like this style of video, also let me know. I can do more just fragrance check-ins, I guess. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks so much for spending time with me today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.